G'day guys and welcome back to a special episode of Fix It Fingers Fibers. Today I'm going to be handling a beginner's list of the five jigs that I recommend you build or buy as you begin your woodworking career. They're all going to focus on my two essential tools for beginners, the router and the circular saw. Even to this day, these two tools for me do an awful lot of the work and I use them on every single project. They're the two most important power tools. If you want to see what my other three most important power tools for a beginner are, then go and check out the Fix It Fingers Fiber on that topic. As we mentioned, hashtag WoodJigs21 is a challenge that I am currently running and I encourage you to get involved. We do have some lovely sponsors and prizes on board and while this isn't really an entry per se, I thought this video would tie in very well to the theme. So let's take a look at some jigs that you can make and at the same time, if you don't want to bugger around with all this building, if you can buy an equivalent of them. Hang around to right at the end because I've got a sneaky six one that I wanted to add in just for fun because I think it's really, really cool. Let's get cracking. So you're a beginning woodworker and you've got yourself a few basic hand power tools. One of the most common tasks that you're going to do with the timber you find or purchase are simple cuts. And this first series of jigs on the circular saw are going to help you with those cuts to get them accurate and repeatable. Piece of timber, bed slat, actually one of my favorite building materials. The first cut we're going to look at is the simple cross cut or going across the grain, making long boards shorter. And this is the jig that we have come up with. Let's take a very quick look at how you put one of these together. I've screwed a scrap handle to a very long piece of 6mm MDF that has a factory edge on it that we know is straight. Drill a single hole through and screw in a cross member. Make sure you've left more space than the clearance that your blade needs. Grab yourself a square or better yet a check square. Ensure that the 90 degree angle is there between your long cutting guide and your cross member. Screw the cross member in nice and tight. Grab your circular saw and trim off the end of that cross member to give you a perfect zero point. Now we can line up the edge of the guide to the piece of MDF that we want to cut here. I've clamped down the long end to make sure that it stays put and we can run our saw guide with confidence that we're going to have a beautiful 90 degree cut exactly where the edge guide is telling us to go. However, a more common use of this might be the short version where I've just hacked off the end of this so it's only about 30 centimeters long and here you can see we quickly line up that edge guide to where we want to cut and it becomes a simple accurate device. So as you can see, our homemade crosscut jig is incredibly useful. So fast, so repeatable, and so simple to make. Five minutes. Literally, you can knock one of these out. However, if you want something that looks a little bit flashier, I have looked at the old Craig Square Cut. That's the one I used for a long time. And then recently, I took a quick sneak peek at the brand new portable crosscut. Honestly, they do about the same job. This one you'll have to spend about 20 or $30 on. This one you'll have to spend 20 or 30 cents on. Your choice, this one looks a bit cooler, but your DIY version, it's going to do pretty much the same job. All right, let's move on to number two. Next up is my poor man's track saw. This was, I think, the first jig I ever made, and honestly, I just remade it on the video for you. Let's see how we do this. I did give it a little bit of a clean up though. Again, the important thing here is that this is a factory or very straight edge. You want to screw it down to a slightly wider board, just like before, making sure that the width of that board is just a touch wider than the base of your circular saw. Because after we've screwed it down nice and straight, we're going to run our saw through, take off that edge and make it parallel to our guide. And we've bang straight away got a poor man's track saw. Now, why would you want this on top of the square cut? Because you can do things like angles. They're going to give you chip protection as well which will give you cleaner cuts on sheet goods like ply. So as you can see, the poor man's track saw allows you not only to cross cut, you could of course cross cut on this, it just is a bit of extra setup time to get it perfectly straight. This is going to allow you for rip cuts. What I didn't show on my video is you could of course make this four foot to eight foot long and either half or completely cut a full sheet of plywood if you wish. I just never had need for that sort of functionality. 
If you do want to go up to not a proper track saw, but somewhere in between, then the Craig AccuCut is the one I use. Same chip guards. This one, actually, I do have the full length of. Haven't had to use it yet. But it is just that little bit more accurate. You probably noticed my board has bent in the middle. Depends on what sort of level of accuracy and speed that you want. This one here also requires you to install it on a sled. So you've got to take it on, you've got to take it off. But again, once you're all set up, then you've got to get probably superior results with the paid version. But there's absolutely nothing wrong with just a little bit of care of using the cheaper version too. There's one more I'll show you. This is the Craig Straight Edge Guide. It's an awful lot cheaper than the AccuCut. It doesn't have the chip and in sort of a way, it's a combination between the AccuCut and the CrossCut. It will allow you to very quickly line up, hook on and do CrossCuts. It doesn't do angles quite as well. So this one sort of falls in between the two of them. It's another good option if you don't want to build anything, but you don't want to outlay for the expensive track saw. Last but not least for the circular saw is perhaps my favorite jig and one that I don't really have a paid equivalent for. It's my thin strip ripping jig. And while I have used this a lot, I knocked it up in about 30 seconds. So I rebuilt it yesterday to make it a little bit nicer looking. Let's take a look at that. Nothing like using a jig you just made to help you build a jig. I had tested my brad nailer on this piece of pallet wood. So I had to cut off those to protect my blade later on. I started by screwing a 6mm piece of MDF to the end of this large wide pallet board and I'm making sure that the pieces of timber that I usually cut down, bed slats, at about 70mm or 3 inches allows me to run the saw guide's edge off the edge of that piece of pallet wood. I then use my big framing square to ensure that I have guides of the same 6mm MDF all the way down the length to act as the supports. You could just use one continuous piece. I was trying to use up some scraps. And this is how it works. We put our piece of timber down. We set the saw guide edge to the correct width. We turn on the dust extractor halfway through the cut and we can use that L-shaped holder to support the piece while we make the rip cut. The blade depth here is very important. That one I got absolutely bang on. And if you do have a piece that is narrower than the guide you've created, put in a straight piece to separate it further from the fence. And again, you can rip very thin pieces, even thinner. This really does help replicate one of the main functions of your table saw. It is really simple, really handy, and I still to this day use it a lot because I still do not own a table saw and it gets me out of trouble all the time. All right, let's move on to the router. So the trim router is my favorite tool. I use it all the time and it's just so versatile. There are so many different jobs you can do with it as a handheld unit with your variety of bits. However, to get the maximum value out of your trim router, there is a jig that you absolutely have to have and it's pretty much the first proper thing that I built for this workshop. And that's a router table. Now, if you want, you can go back and see how I made my proper router table. And if you're really keen, then there is a super duper DIY version of this, which DIY for knuckleheads, Uncle Knackers, has just put in as part of the Wood Jigs 21 challenge. But if you want to knock something up in literally five minutes to turn your trim router into a router table, here's how I did this yesterday. So grab yourself some sheet goods, no thicker than 12 mil or half an inch. Get your trim router, take the base off and find a forstner bit or other hole drilling device of a suitable size and plow a hole straight through your new tape. A backing board can help with this. Use the router base to mark out your holes. Drill some countersink holes that are going to then reattach the router underneath the table. You'll probably need to clear these out with a slightly larger drill bit to make the machine screws fit. Get your router, pop the screws back in, and hand tighten them into position. Set your depth with new router bit, and we're halfway there. A router table is most useful if you have a fence. Grab another straight piece of plywood, or any other very straight timber that you have, 
Use a force and a bit to make the appropriate size clearance hole for your router bit. Clamp it down on both ends and you will be rebating away in literally minutes. It's quick, it's crude, but it will work. So that cheap and, well, not nasty, cheap and simple solution will work. It will get you through an awful lot of router work. However, I would recommend perhaps, if you are gonna use a router quite a bit, particularly if you get one with a plunge base, to make yourself a proper router plate, which is gonna sit into a table, or if you've got the bench space, permanently mount it in. I have to take mine in and out all of the time. Otherwise, of course, you can go into the paid router bases. Craig, as naturally, do one. Carbotech have got great ones. There's a few different brands out there, and you can spend a lot of money making a router table absolutely schmick and beautiful, but it can cost you as little as a scrap piece of MDF, or you can go one of the in-between DIY options, or you can go whole hog, spend a bunch of money and have a beautiful, precise piece of engineering. Up to you, but a router table is an absolute essential, basically in my books, for your beginning woodworking workshop. The last of my DIY jigs is the most complicated, probably the one that you'll build last after you've made the other ones, but it is incredibly useful when you start stepping up from dimensional timber that comes from the shop in a certain size to rough timber, where you're gonna to have to get to the size that you require for the project. And that is a router sled. Now, I didn't rebuild this one because there's a little bit to it. But as you can see, this is a base that screws onto my workbench using these little wing nuts. And effectively, all it is is a nice slippery piece of form ply here and two rails. The sled itself has two rails to sit either side and I had some aluminium angle lying around to hold my router but you can see how this goes together. It's not complicated. Sled can slide that way. I usually use double-sided tape or if it's long enough you can even clamp it down at the end and if I wanted to flatten this out and make the sides parallel then I put my servicing bit on my router Plunge it down to an appropriate depth to take off a little bit and you can slide the whole assembly. I'll put some footage up of how I've used that in the past and this can take things down pretty darn thin. You can get to a couple of millimetres, maybe an eighth of an inch, three mil with a setup such as this. Extremely handy. And last little trick I'll show you with it is because you only have a certain plunge depth, if you want to get even thinner, then you can use a second piece, clamp that down, raise your bit up, and that will allow you to do some tricky mortising, some fine detail work. Honestly, I find so many uses for this router sled. It's another one that you're gonna to wanna to add to your collection early on, and you could even do some wacky stuff like turn it into a drum sander. But <laughs> that's a video for another time. Just before I unveil my Sneaky 6 tool, which I think is probably the favourite jig that I have bought, I will encourage you to please go and check out the sponsors to Wood Jigs 21. I won't list them all here. I'll put their logos up and there's a whole video announcing what you can win by entering this competition. And another call that if you'd like to be a judge, then by all means, jump on in and send me an email, james at fixitfingers.com. So what is this mystery jig which I have never been able to DIY? My rip cut. I absolutely adore this thing. It's not that expensive and honestly, it's paid for itself many, many times over because what it allows you to do is rock up to your timber supplier, buy a full sheet of MDF or plywood, which is going to be a lot cheaper than buying multiple quarter sheets, which is the other option size you can get, and rip it down to very accurate dimensions to fit it in the back of the car. Honestly, after you've bought two sheets of goods, this is pretty much paid for itself. It has the same sled as the AccuCut and those two can work brilliantly hand in hand. You set up a repeatable stop at whatever centimeter up to 60 centimeters. So what's that, about two feet? 
and you can repeatably, quickly and accurately rip down your sheets with it. It is my absolute favourite tool by Craig. No, this is not sponsored. Yes, I am a Craig affiliate, but I genuinely love their tools. And like all the other jigs that you've seen here of the paid variety, there are links below to where you can get them at Carbotech here in Australia and Amazon for you overseas folks. And that's pretty much it for this Fix It Fingers Fibers. If you're interested in seeing some more of this beginner series, I'll put the playlist up here for you guys to check out about hand tools, power tools, wood, and there'll be more coming in the future too. Get on board Wood Jigs 21, get your entries in by the end of August, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.